Right, the great van test, part two, to E or not to E, the Ford Transit. Now, I had planned on being in a nice 72 plate Ford Transit custom uh, with all the whistles and bells, but uh, sometimes in this line of work, it don't work out like that. So instead, I am in a Transit 350 flatbed um, and it's absolutely shit eye. I don't know if you can tell from the video. This is filthy. It stinks. It's had hard life. It's four years old. It's done 120,000 miles. It's earned its money. Which is, after all, the entire point of a van. It's not there to look pretty. Well, if it does, it helps. It's there to do a job. It's there to earn money. And it's there to earn the people driving it money. That's the whole point of it. And that is why milk float vans don't work. This one, on the other hand, has clearly worked and worked itself into the ground. Um, so anyway, the Transit, brand new. If you buy a diesel one, the uh, 350 Eco Blue, um, that comes in at 37,000 pounds, including VAT. Um, and for that, you get the Transit. You don't get this. You get a big display with sat nav bluetooth and everything else on it and uh, it's beautiful inside and you're just gonna have to take my word for it because i'm not sat inside one that's the point however it's thirty-seven thousand pounds if you want an electronic version a, a milk float transit god forbid the base model again they do two models very similar to the Vauxhall vivaro that i described yesterday where um there's two types of battery. There's the market battery, where you buy a strip of 16 for a pound and they control your, they work your remote control for a week. Or there's the slightly better than that Ever Ready Blue battery, um, which will do your personal stereo for about the same amount of time. Walkman, if you're in the uh, US of A. Um, both shit, but one slightly less shit than the other. Almost the polished turd, but that's a hybrid. Um, so anyway, the uh, the leader, which is what they call their uh, base model electric van, is <clears throat> fifty thousand pounds for the base model for your electric transit milk float, fifty grand. Then they also do the pro. This is the one with a slightly better battery, same spec, slightly better battery. <clears throat> 57 grand 57 grand now Ford you're taking the piss because you can buy a brand new Mustang for that now you can buy it for less than that you can buy it for less in fact I think I seen one the other day for 40 so you could buy a Mustang V8 proper car for less money than an electric milk float that's madness so, on we go. Same as we did yesterday, same format. What's the range of a transit diesel? 600 miles, same as a Vivoro. In fact, slightly more. Um, but call it 600, round it down. Let's assume you've got a few sheets of plywood in the back of it and it's weighing it down a bit. So you're going to get 600 miles. Um, out of your uh, leader, the 50 grand option, the cheaper one of the two, you're going to get, on a good day, 110 miles fully loaded. That's 110 miles in a transit, which, granted, if you're fully loaded, let's go another day in the life of a builder. Builders use transits. It's a good example. Builder's got his transit. He comes out, he unplugs it in the morning, and then he drives around, pick his mate up, then they drive to Juicens, pick up a load of supplies, and then they drive to the job. By the time they've got there, they've used half their battery. I don't care where the job is. I guarantee they've used half their battery by the time they've got there. And if it's raining, and if it's cold, then they've used even more. And then, at the end of the day, they've got to get back in that van. Now you imagine, you've been working on a cold building site all day, You've been freezing your tits off, you're piss wet through, 
and you jump in the van, which always used to be, oh, I can't wait, get back in the van, I can't wait, oh, just, just throw me feet out. And then you get in the van, you sit in the passenger seat, and your boss jumps in, and he goes, right, mate, let's go home. All right, boss, wacky is on with you. Bit of an issue there. More say, well, you've got a choice. We can either get you home, cold, or we can turn the heaters on, and then we're going to have to stop at Tesco for an hour on the way home and charge up before we can go home. And that is the reality. That is what you're talking about when you buy an electric van to use it for building or professional purposes or anything that involves outdoor work. You go outdoors and when you get back in, you don't get to warm up. Because if you want to warm up, you best have a charger on standby. And that's what you get for 50 grand. Now, for 57 grand, the pro version, you get an extra 30 miles. So that's seven grand has just paid to keep your labourer warm. Because that extra 30 miles means that you can get there and get home in warmth. Because you could use that 30 miles up turning your fans on. So seven grand is suddenly a wise investment to stop your labourer getting hypothermia. But somehow in 2024, this doesn't seem to be the logical conclusion to where we're going to with milk floatery. That for you have to pay an extra seven grand to stop your labourer from dying from pneumonia. But that's the world we live in. So there you have it. That's the Vivaro and the Transit. The difference between the electric and the diesel is roughly 20 grand. And then you've got to spend an extra five grand if you want to keep your feet warm. So uh, along with the Vito E, that's part three, by the way, the Vito E. And uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos or you haven't watched it, go and watch the one on the Vito E. <laughs> It'll save a lot of time um, because that's worse than the first two. And I haven't looked up the list price for it yet, but I very much doubt it's cheaper than the Vivaro and it's probably on a par with the Transit. Um, so part three will be the Vito. Here we are, 2024. Builders freezing their tits off because they've made, made to buy a milk float that doesn't keep them warm when they come off site. Future my arse.